Welcome to Das Geek. So one of the things you may be preparing for is the weekend since it is Friday. And what do you want to do on the weekend? You want to watch some movies, relax, kick back with your favorite drinks, some snacks. Maybe you want to take in some music, listen to your sound system. If you're an audiophile, maybe you want to watch some of those movies. Maybe you've seen the trailer for the new Aliens movie and you want to go back and watch some of the older ones. You just want to consume some good entertainment. And I'm going to show you five super cheap ways to set up a media server. It used to be really expensive. Now it's not expensive at all. And it's so simple, even a caveman could do it. I mean, anyone can set up a media server. You could walk your grandma or grandpa through setting up a media server, even if they don't even know how to turn on a computer, because this is about as simple as it gets and you can do it on multiple platforms. What you're seeing right here is an example of a media server that I've set up using Plex. I have Plex Premium, but you can use Plex. You can use Kodi and Plex together now if you haven't heard the news, which is also fantastic if you're a fan of Kodi or XMBC. So I have some videos that I'll link up above of where I've set up Plex on a Raspberry Pi, which is one of our cheap options. This little thing right here, this little $40 device, can run an entire Plex server, but we even have better options than that. So what do you get with a Plex? What's the point of it? Well, it organizes all of your media. It pulls metadata out from different sites. So you get these awesome little tags for your movies and pictures and information, and it can even pull in trailers and that type of stuff. It organizes it. It can create playlists and you can watch, listen, whatever you're wanting to do with your media, from afar so if i'm on a business trip i'm sitting in the airport terminal i'm in a hotel room i am traveling sitting in line at a walmart i got my new bluetooth headphones got my phone there i don't have to go to just netflix if i've got a bad signal I, if i have plex premium i could sync it and download these movies to my phone and watch them if i have a wi-fi or, or signal then i can watch those movies streaming directly from the server i set up again even something this small can handle that and do it. So, uh, the video that I'm gonna link above is an older video I did where I set up the Plex server on the Raspberry Pi. But right now, what you're seeing right here on my main machine is I'm logged into my server, which is an old Dell Optiplex that I got from Goodwill. And I can play my movies here, I can stream all of my music, and you can see it pulls all the album art and everything else down. You don't need a super expensive computer for this. But there are other options where you don't need any hardware. So let's get into what our options are for starting a super cheap media server. So I created this really simple uh, mock-up here to show you some of your options as we talk through them. The number one option, which is so simple, this is the one you could walk anybody through. And you do need Plex Premium for this, but Plex has a free option as well. But you do need Plex Premium for this particular option, which is their cloud server. Now what this does is allows you to take the space you have on Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive, either one of those services, and you can set it up as your Plex server. So you basically will go through a couple prompts once you set up your Plex Premium. You'll choose Cloud. It'll say what account do you want to use. Do you want to use Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive? You click it. It does the setup for you. You create a folder on there for OneDrive, Dropbox, or Google Drive. You move all of your media to it, your music, your movies. You upload all of that, which will take some time to upload depending on your connection speed. But once you have all your media there, it acts as your Plex server. You can access it anywhere. You're just going to download the app on your phone You're gonna or whatever device you're using. And my gosh, it's compatible with any everything. Android, iOS, Amazon Fire TV, it doesn't matter. And you can watch your media from there, whether you're at home or whether you are far away. Um, so Plex Premium is $14.99 per month, $39 for a year. I mean, that's less than a movie ticket there for a year of Plex Premium or $119 for a lifetime and never have to pay another monthly payment again. And that to me is the best option because I hate monthly payments. Um, so everybody wants to monthly you to death and I love that they have a lifetime option there. So 119 bucks, you get a bunch of other features with Plex Premium. Uh, it can do DVR services now and all kinds of incredible things. So Check that out on their website, which will be linked below. But uh, Google Drive, I've got tons of space in there from having purchased Chromebooks that came with 
you know, hundreds or 500 gigabytes of space, uh, setting up other people or texting stuff out, I think, for OneDrive, some of the social or Dropbox. I think if you text or get people to sign up, you get space. There's so many ways to get free space. But if you're out of space on those services, you can also pay for it. Honestly, if you look down here below, these are the, the prices uh, for space on Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive. The best deal, honestly, is OneDrive. Uh, five terabytes for $99 plus you get office 365 home so you can't really beat that uh, it's a really fantastic deal for five terabytes so if you need space uh, they're probably the cheapest provider I don't I can't say they're the best but they're certainly the cheapest in the prices that I was able to find and look up uh, so that's your cheapest option because you don't need any hardware uh, you just do a one-time lifetime pass or just do $40 for the year and if you already have space on those services like I did, then you're set up. You're good to go. You don't need to purchase anything else. That would be the cheapest. Uh, if you don't have space, then you may have to buy that and it starts to get a little more expensive. So let's look at the other options. This little guy, this Raspberry Pi 3, works beautifully as a Plex server. Uh, very fun to play with. You can do tons of things with this Raspberry Pi. You can make a game emulator. You can install uh, different versions of Linux operating systems on it. And you can also run Plex and Kodi on this as well. So what I did is I got a very expensive, well, not very expensive, but a more expensive USB drive that's much faster uh, than your normal USB drive. And I used that so that the access read and write times wouldn't be uh, too bogged down or bottlenecked. So I wouldn't use a cheap USB uh, device to store this or a cheap hard drive. I'd get a fast one because you're gonna have a little bit of bottlenecking just because it doesn't have a super ton of processing power, but it's certainly good enough and it runs the Plex server just fine. Um, and you can set that up. You can get these for about 35 bucks. You can get that USB drive for about the same. So all in all, you'll be about a hundred bucks and then you could set up Plex uh, on that device. You can do the Plex free so you don't have to pay for it and you'll be set with that and have your media on this or you could do premium. And guys, you could do a combination, and gals, a combination here as well. You can have Plex Premium and have cloud services where some of your stuff is on the cloud, and you can have some of it where it's local. The option I'm using right now, the server that you saw, is this exact machine that I got at Goodwill for 30 bucks. Goodwill has all of these off-lease you know, computers that I will hunt down and find where they work fine. People get rid of them because they're old. It's 30 to 50 bucks for these, especially if you look, uh, Goodwill has like this color system where if it has a yellow sticker on it, it's 50% off sometimes or, or whatever they have. And so I, I will go and I will hunt and look for these machines. They're great little server machines. You could set up a LAMP server on it. It runs Plex beautifully. You could do a Kodi Plex combination on this. A lot of them have good hard drive space in them as well. And you have CD-ROMs and USB ports and all of that. And you could get a cheap monitor while you're there and keyboard if you need that. I like to use just a wireless off of one dongle, like a wireless uh, keyboard and mouse that I can stick into a drawer because you don't need to really mess with the server once it's set up too much. Uh, so you can just get a wireless USB mouse and keyboard to work off the same dongle, stick them in a drawer for when you don't need it. And when you want to mess with the server, you can pull it out. And the monitors they have at Goodwill or Craigslist or something like that, again, you could get for cheap. Another option out there, and you're going to get a lot more power with that Optiplex than the Raspberry Pi, by the way. A lot more processing power, a lot more RAM. So that's a really good option if you can find those on the cheap, uh, which they're everywhere. Another option is the PS3. The PS3 can be turned into a media center. And you can get a PS3 on eBay just looking real quick for $150 or less. Uh, they may even have, I think they were about that price at the local GameStop. So you could pick up a PS3 and there are instructions that I'll link below from sites that show you how to turn that into a media center. So that's another option for you as well. And then there's the Nvidia Shield. It's the most expensive, but still cheap. And when you think about a media center, you know, it used to cost a lot of money to get these things set up and a ton of work. Now with Plex and Kodi and things, this stuff is super, super simple. It's clicks of buttons. Kodi's a little more difficult than Plex. Plex is super easy uh, to set up, but you're looking at $300 new or $250 used plus it can stream games to your TV as well. The NVIDIA Shield is a much beloved device. I do want to get one my hands on one of those. Out of these options, that's the only one I haven't actually uh, done myself as an NVIDIA Shield, but I think I'm going to have to play with that soon. So those are five ways that you can set up a media center to have all of your pictures, all of your music, all of your movies that you have stored on 
They're completely expandable. Every one of these options is expandable. This one, you could buy more space. This one, you could add more space. You could combine these options. This one, you can have external drives or add new drives to it. Uh, this one, I think you could do external drives on. Yeah, you could do external drives on the PS3. And I believe you could do external drives on the NVIDIA Shield as well. So they're all expandable. They can grow with your media as you need it. It is really cool to be able to access all of your music, all of your movies and everything. And also, I'll tell you, there are a lot of movies. And I'll put a link to this as well as the final link out there that are now basically public domain. So there are a lot of really great older movies out there that are public domain that you can download, not illegal, and you can get all those set up on your media server and watch them as you want, as you please. So those are five super cheap ways to set up a media server. Leave your comments below. Let me know some ones that I may have missed. Some other ways you can set up a cheap media server. Let me know if you use Plex, Plex Premium, Cody, the combination of both. We're going to do some more videos on Plex here coming up, kind of showing setups and different options that you have with it. Because I think there's a lot of fun to be had with Plex. And until next time, I hope you have a great weekend. And remember to spend your weekend filling your brains. Don't get too far. Don't get like the video.